great series, the first one between the West Sand Lake Bandits and the North Greenbush Wolves, followed by the Grafton Lake Sharks versus Troy Battlehawks. Let's get to the first series. Anthony Carucci on the hill for the home team, the Wolves. Brooks at the dish, going to lead things off with this double to get the Bandits started early. Samboy would then follow things up with a four-pitch walk that would score Brooks, making it one nothing Bandits. And then Mike Ruffinen, who's been hot all season, going to get this double. The Bandits would go up 2 nothing after the top of the first. Bottom one, Carucci remains hot and would get things started for his team as well with this single up the middle. Wolves with a runner on to start the bottom of the first. Then Graf, very next step back, and a double here, just getting it by Ruffinen. Second and third here for the Wolves, back to Carucci. Tough hop here, gonna bounce right up over Brooks for a single, a run would come around. The Wolves were hot early. They would push four across in this inning. Brooks would finally settle in and get a couple of strikeouts here at the end of the inning, but the damage was done. Wolves up 4-2 after one. Carucci was clean in the top of the second, including this Samboy strikeout. Brooks would match him, so we take you to the top of the third. This pitch right here is going to be ball four, and Anthony Carucci has walked the bases loaded with no outs, a double would tie it, but he's gonna strike out Ruffinen, and then Samboy gonna foul out, bases loaded, working out of a jam. Could he do it? And he does just that, the slider. Brooks gonna foul it out, and the Wolves take game one, four to two, go up one nothing in the series. Game two, Wolves home once again. Graf on the hill for the Wolves. Samboy, after two walks, is gonna single it here. And that would load the bases for Brooks, who would then hit this missile double through Milanese, scoring two. The Bandits would actually score five in the inning. Samboy on the hill for the Bandits. Gives up a missile line drive homer here, but that's the only run the Wolves would get in the bottom of the first is as the Bandits get some defensive help seen here on this play. We take a slow-mo look here at the diving effort and the one-handed grab from Samboy. Show it to him. Big out there for the Bandits. Samboy would then go on to strike out Milanese to close out the inning. Bandits up 5-1 early. Top of the second after a Samboy walk. Ruffin is going to double, putting a runner on second and third, and then Brooks would just barely drop in this single off the fingertips of Carucci. Bandits would get one in the top of the second. Samboy back to work in the bottom of the second. Gonna strike out Carucci on the soft slider. But Graf had Samboy's number in this one. Gonna homer again. Another solo shot. But he was the only one that could hit Sam Boy in this inning because he was painting the corner like Picasso. Bandits remain up 6-2 at this point. Bandits would go up big in the top of the third, capped by this triple from Ruffin and five runs in the inning. Bandits go up 11-2 in the bottom of the third. Sam Boy would return the favor and this time it was a different story. He would strike out Graf not once, but twice in the inning. The Wolves did push a couple across, but they would lose this one 11-4 to even up the series for the Bandits. Samboy at home back on the hill in game three would get a solid defensive play here, but the Wolves brought the hit sticks early. Milanese gonna send one deep, held to a single. But Carucci would then follow up with a double. And then Graf gonna barely drop one here after a diving effort. Gonna single. Wolves would go up 4 0 after the top of the first. Bandits look to creep back in in the bottom of the first. Ruffin in. Gonna put one deep here to the wall. Back, 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 back. Barely stays in, ends up being a single, and then Brooks follows it up 
with a little homer of his own. Knuckles that one to deep center. Bandits would get two in the inning and be down 4-2 going into the top of the second. Top two, Brooks in relief, but it didn't matter. The Wolves would continue to swing hot bats. Gucci would double here. And then Graf gonna punch one through. The Wolves would get two runs in this inning after this Carucci double that makes it to the wall and pushed their lead to 6-2 going into the bottom of the second. Milanese would lose control walking five batters in the bottom of the second and when he threw a strike he threw it to the BBWL's hottest hitter Mike Ruffin in who gives him a little booyah. Big homer here, two run shot, five run inning for the Bandits. They take a 7-6 lead going into the top of the third. The Wolves with their last chance to get back in the game. High fives all around. Colton Brooks, the Bandits' biggest fan on site here, all fired up. Last chance for the Wolves. Brooks looking to pick up the win. Gonna get Carucci to strike out to start. And then Graf to foul out. Milanese though would keep things alive and give the Wolves some hope with this line drive single. But in the end, the Bandits came on strong to finish the game. And Carucci is gonna fly out to roughen in to end it. Bandits win this one. 7-6, take the series 2-1. The afternoon series would feature the one and two Grafton Lake Sharks versus the two and four Battle Hawks, both teams trying to get their way back up to 500. Samar, the hitter, entered the game. The BBWL's top hitter gonna take a strike on the upper left-hand corner there. But Santiago with a little pick-me-up. Touch them all, big fella. Sharks would go up one nothing in the top of the first. Bottom of the first, Ethan Samar going to give up a two-run blast here to Blake Weger. Just made it a 2-1 game. Samar would struggle to find the strike zone and throw four straight pitches to Jimmy Brunel, which would also lead to three runs. Battle Hawks would go up 5-1 after the bottom of the first. Weger was dealing. Sinker dropped Samar. No luck there, and then he would finish the inning mowing down Morin. Hawks would keep the lead 5-1 going into the bottom of the second. It was all weird in this one. A three-run oh, no. homer, absolute bomb here in the bottom of the second. Hawks would score four more runs in this inning and go up 9-1 after two. Battle Hawks went to their inning eater to finish the game up. John Colligan would put down Samard. He would surrender a double to Santiago, giving up two runs, but too little too late. Hawks win this one 9-3. Weger back on the hill in game two for the Battle Hawks. Gonna sit down Matt Moore and pick up where he left off. Striking out more and striking out Samard, but it was Santiago who had his number in the first game and once, a he once again here in game two, gonna give the Sharks a one nothing lead and this would come to be a big home run later in the game, you'll see why. The real story in this one, Matt Morin. What do you put in your car? Gas. He was lighting it up here early. Strikes out to Zembo, then puts down Wiegert. And Colligan going to suffer the same fate. Clean through the first inning. Warren strikes out the side. Wiegert would match him, though. A strikeout of his own. Smart chasing the slider. And then Santiago would stay all over Wiegert. But this time, it was a web gem from Jimmy Burnell. Check this one out. A little instant replay on the slow-mo. Fights it off, but Burnell there to snag it. Hawks would stay in this one, but at this point, it would remain a 1-0 game. Sharks in the lead. Bottom two, Morin going to run into a little bit of trouble. Walks the leadoff hitter, Burnell. That's going to be key later on. 
walks to Zembo, and then gonna blow one by Uyghur for the first out of the inning. And then Colligan puts this one to play. A little bit of English, just enough. Warren can't handle it. He then strikes out Burnell. So now, two outs, bases loaded. Dezembo with a great eye, a run's gonna come in. The Hawks tie it, it's the only run they get in the inning. 1-1 one, one going into the top of the third. Weger out of innings pitched. Gonna give the ball to Dezembo. Big play here from Burnell to get the inning start in the top of the third. Samard though, <laughs> gonna hit this one with enough English on it for a single. And then Matt Morin, been struggling all day. Gonna double here after a Santiago walk. That would push one across and the Sharks would take a 2-1 lead into the bottom of the third. Matt Morin gonna make things interesting here in the bottom of the third. He walks the leadoff batter, then walks Burnell. Two on, no outs. Gonna strike out to Zembo, bringing up their best hitter, Blake Wieger. He goes down on strike. So now we got a run on first and second and two outs. Colligan doesn't chase. Bases loaded, 2-2 two, two count to Burnell. Ball three, it comes down to this pitch. They either tie it or the Sharks win. Morin. Louisiana, Bayou. Big win here for the Sharks. Their pitching struggled so far this year. Morin helps the Sharks win here, 2-1. Big game for him as the series is tied 1-1 going into game three. Game three, Sharks gonna send Santiago to the mound. All of a sudden, the Sharks pitching is starting to step up. He's gonna strike out Uyghur, strike out Colligan, and he's gonna get to Zembo as well. Strikes out the side going into the bottom of the first. Take you over to bottom one, two on, Matt Morin. Hit a lot of home runs in the first series, and he's starting to heat up. Three run blast here. The Sharks not known for their pitching, but today their pitching was dialed in, especially in games two and three, and now Morin starting to heat up again with a little trademark backflip after his home runs. Sharks take a three nothing lead after one. Top of the second here though, the Battle Hawks gonna creep back in. John Colligan gonna take the Ephus off of Samard for a single, and then Wiegert slams one past Morin, who as you can see, well known for his bat and his ability to throw strikes. However, defensively struggling here to get to this one. Wieger gonna double, Hawks score two, three two game going into the bottom of the second. Bottom two here now. Santiago, after a leadoff walk to Samar, gonna single here off of Colligan, and then Matt Morin starting to heat up here. You can see the excitement because then later on in the inning, a little bit of the blue bat special. Three run blast. Morin's second homer of the game. The Sharks would get four in this inning, and at this point, they were up seven. Two. Big showing from the Sharks. Can they hold off the Battle Hawks in the next inning? Oh, Battle Hawks down to their last chance. Santiago gonna walk Burnell and then walk Dezembo. He does settle in though here and strikes out Uyghur. So the Sharks decide they're gonna pull Santiago. Interesting move because Morin gonna walk the bases loaded Colligan making sure Santiago knows about it, and then on four straight pitches get out of here it's now a 7-5 game three runs come in on the IBB intentional base on balls let's see if Samar can figure it out he gets one guy so now the Battle Hawks down to their last out and Samar gonna get Uyghur looking the Sharks hang on. They're going to win this one 7-5. They take the series 2-1, getting the record back up to 500. Wiegert struggled in this one and not the way he wanted to end it. He thought the game was still going to go on, only to find out this one was over. And there you have it. Two great series. Thanks for joining us once again on The Recap.